Hello again. This is Dr. Cynthia Putman. Today we're going to talk about intellectual disabilities. Here's our verse to remember. Read it to yourself. I like this verse because it makes you think. We must think that we should be grateful for all the many blessings that we have and also realize we should not think ourselves better than others who may not have the money we do, the resources we do, the intellect we do, or the advantages that we do. Good thought. All right, now we're going to talk about Folks with intellectual disabilities. Many times in the past, which we have discussed in previous PowerPoints, people who were intellectually disabled were abandoned or put away um, in various places, such as those you see listed here. They were not always welcome in society. What were people who were intellectually disabled supposed to do once they were adults? Well, slide four shows you some of the things they did. Some worked on in family businesses on the farm, um, may have been very dependent on their families to take care of them. If they lived in rural areas, many folks with intellectual disabilities had poor health care because they didn't know enough to know when to go to the doctor or were not capable of indicating to their family that they really were sick. And hence, they often had a shorter lifespan. Sometimes people even consider them as being possessed. Um, or that their parents had sinned or done something wrong. Well, nowadays, slide five, how do we determine if someone is qualified as being intellectually disabled for help in public school? The person must be given two different IQ tests, and on those two tests, the IQ must be below 70. Why do you think that is? Well, Anyone can have a bad day. You don't want to put a child in a class for those with limitations as severe as intellectual disabilities unless you're really sure that is what the issue is with that person learning. If a child's sick one day and doesn't do well on a test, you don't want them to end up in a class in which they really don't belong. Also, the child must have significantly below average developmental skills. Why? That could also be an indication that the person is intellectually disabled. In other words, the child is not, does not have good health self-help skills, not able to do things that other people of that age are able to do. The person will be functioning below average for their placement in school. Let's look at the different levels of intellectual disabilities. The lowest level is severely and profoundly disabled. In this case, a person test out on an IQ test is having an IQ below 35. This is the type of person you see who's often not ambulatory. They may or may not be in a wheelchair, and they need pretty much constant adult supervision. Very dependent on others, may have to be fed, may never be toilet trained, may walk or may not walk. A um, person just has a lot of serious limitations and many times other health issues also. Um, so a child like this would be in a self-contained class pretty much all their lives they're in school or as an adult would either live at home or maybe be placed in a residential type setting. Um, those who are moderately intellectually disabled have an IQ of between 35 and 49 and are able to learn to read and write um, and do math up to maybe, maybe a third grade level. The person needs very practical life skills, you know, learning how to take care of clothing, how to cook, how to do simple jobs, and may be very employable. May live in home or outside of their home or perhaps in some kind of a group home as an adult. Next, we have the mildly intellectually disabled. A lot of these uh, folks, you really won't even know the difference between them and someone who's out in your neighborhood. Um, usually IQ between about 50 and 69, may be able to learn academic skills up to about fifth grade, 
very likely person may have a job, may be able to live independently or in a group home or something as an adult. In school, though, usually in a self-contained class most of the day. Next, we have some questions for you. Many people in jails or prisons were classified as intellectually disabled in school. I want you to do some research on this by just Googling on the internet or using whatever search engine you'd like and see if you can answer these questions. Why do so many people with disabilities end up in legal trouble? And what supports could help remedy this problem? I encourage you to write down your answers and bring them to class. Thank you very much, big subtle hint, and on to number 10. We have the bell curve. Oh my goodness, psychiatrists and psychologists, most of them love the bell curve. As you may know, the bell curve purports to show that if you tested 100 people at random on an IQ test, their scores would fall in a shape that resembles a bell. It's the name, the bell curve. Now, when you look down here, you'll see names of the two IQ tests that are used the most frequently in the United States and indeed translated into other languages and used in many other uh, nations also. But the Wexler and the Stanford Binet. David Wexler and his brother developed this IQ test after many years of research. And University of Stanford um, with Alfred Binet named also for him, um, developed the Stanford Binet IQ test. Children who are intellectually disabled are often given both of these tests if it's felt that they can score high enough that we can get a good score for them. Now, what you do is look at 100, which is kind of right on the money, average IQ, shoot up there, and you'll see right in the middle, okay? Average IQ on the Wexler is considered between 85 and about 115. On the Stanford Binet, average IQ runs about 68 up to 116. Okay. Now, if I were to ask you, what's the approximate percentage of people who were considered gifted and talented? intellectually that means in academics what would your answer be well look up here if you add those two together you're getting about two and a quarter percent a little bit over so less than three percent of all humans are considered intellectually superior or intellectually gifted by the same token if I ask you how many people are considered intellectually disabled, it's about the same, right? It is the same. 2.27% of people considered intellectually disabled. Now, in between here, where I'm moving the arrow, those are people considered having an average IQ. Again, average 85 to 115, 84, 116. I mean, that's not enough to even, as the old expression goes, shake a stick at. One point doesn't mean a whole lot with IQ. But anyway, that's average. Here you have high average, and then it goes into intellectually gifted. This is average. Low average. This is people whose IQs generally are in the 70-ish range, maybe lower 80s. A lot of these children historically have not qualified for special education help because they're not considered intellectually disabled and they don't have a high enough IQ to be considered learning disabled. Known as slow learners, even still in some of the older literature, you'll see that term, slow learner. And many times those students do not qualify for any kind of special ed help, much to the dismay of parents and teachers and the frustration of teachers and students, for sure. Okay, let's move on. In spite of decades of research, there's still a lot of controversy about the bell curve and IQ tests. Look for an article that might explain why and bring it to class. You can either bring a paper copy or you can bring it on your smartphone, phone, uh, excuse me, smartphone or some device that you can show.
Now I'd like for you to get ready for PowerPoint 2. Thank you.